17, free energy receiver. For starters, think of this as a solar electric panel. Tesla's invention is very different, but the closest thing to it in conventional technology is in photovoltaic. One radical difference is that conventional solar electric panels consist of a substrate coated with crystalline silicon. The latest use amorphous silicon. Conventional solar panels are expensive, and, whatever the coating, they are manufactured by esoteric processes. But Tesla's solar panel is just a shiny metal plate with a transparent coating of some insulating material, which today could be a spray plastic. Stick one of these antenna-like panels up in the air, the higher the better, and wire it to one side of the capacitor the other going to a good earth ground. Now the energy from the sun is charging that capacitor. Connect across the capacitor some sort of switching device so that it can be discharged to rhythmic intervals, and you have an electric output. Tesla's patent is telling us that it is that simple to get electric energy. The bigger the area of the insulated plate, the more energy you get. But this is more than a solar panel because it does not necessarily need sunshine to operate. It also produces power at night of course, this is impossible according to official science. For this reason, you could not get a patent on such an invention today. Many an inventor has learned this the hard way. Tesla had his problems with the patent examiners. But today's free energy inventor has it much tougher. Tesla's free energy receiver was patented in 1901 as an apparatus for the utilization of radiant energy. The patent refers to the sun, as well as other sources of radiant energy, like cosmic rays. That the device works at night is explained in terms of the nighttime availability of cosmic rays. Tesla also refers to the ground as a vast reservoir of negative electricity. Tesla was fascinated by radiant energy and its free energy possibilities. He called the Crookes radiometer, a device which has veins that spin in a vacuum when exposed to radiant energy, a beautiful invention. He believed that it would become possible to harness energy directly by connecting to the very wheelwork of nature. His free energy receiver is as close as he ever came to such a device in his patented work. But on his 76th birthday at the Ritual Press Conference, Tesla, who was without the financial wherewithal to patent but went on inventing in his head, announced a cosmic ray motor. When asked if it was more powerful than the Crookes radiometer, he answered, thousands of times more powerful. How it works from the electric potential that exists between the elevated plate, plus, and the ground, minus, energy builds in the capacitor, and, after a suitable time interval, the accumulated energy will manifest itself in a powerful discharge which can do work. The capacitor, says Tesla should be of considerable electrostatic capacity and it's dielectric made of the best quality mica, for it has to withstand potentials that could rupture a weaker dielectric. Tesla gives various options for the switching device. One is a rotary switch that resembles a Tesla circuit controller. Another is an electrostatic device consisting of two very light, membranous conductors suspended in a vacuum. These sense the energy buildup in the capacitor, one going positive, the other negative, and, at a certain charge level, are attracted, touch, and thus fire the capacitor. Tesla also mentions another switching device consisting of a minute air gap or weak dielectric film, which breaks down suddenly when a certain potential is reached. The above is about all the technical detail you get in the patent. Plossens converter. Tesla's invention may have helped to inspire the many other inventors who have worked in the field of free energy. At least a dozen are on record. Let's look at one in particular. In 1921 Hermann Plossen, a German experimenter, succeeded in obtaining patents, including one in the U.S. for conversion of atmospheric electric energy. In school, Every introduction to electricity touches on the phenomenon of so-called static, or electrostatic, electricity, and this is what Plawson means by atmospheric. Static electricity is built-up charge, electricity in a raw state, and it comes easy in nature, as evidenced by lightning and the aurora borealis. If you have ever seen a frictional static machine in operation, it's not difficult to imagine the tremendous potential in artificially produced static. A rotating disc, type of static machine or the silk belt type, as in the Van de Graaff generator, produces discharges like those from a Tesla coil. Unfortunately, in school, 
the subject of static electricity is briefly touched upon and then abruptly dropped, never to be mentioned again. Electrical power sources thereafter are limited to the battery or the wall socket. How it works In the Plossen drawing the free energy converter on the left interfaces with a disc type static machine via special pickup combs. When the static collecting disc is rotated, the combs pick up the charge, one comb going positive, and the other negative. The combs, in turn, charge up their respective capacitors until sufficiently high potential builds to jump the spark gap. The oscillatory discharge is induced into the transformer primary. This is high voltage, high frequency electric energy. The familiar spark gap oscillator has turned charge into dynamic energy. The transformer steps down the vibrating high voltage to practical levels to power lighting, heating, and special high-frequency motors. The Plossen patent drawing shows a device that works on the same principle but collects energy by means of an antenna, as does Tesla's receiver. Since the higher the antenna the better, and the more area the better, Plossen favors big metallic helium balloons. Plossen says the safety gap, which has three times the resistance of the working gap, is absolutely necessary for collecting large quantities of charge. The capacitors across the gaps in the series safety gap allow for uniform sparking. Plossen's device suggests that Tesla's might be explained in terms of electrostatics. Tesla, at the press conference honoring his 77th birthday in 1933 declared that electric power was everywhere present in unlimited quantities and could drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil gas, or any other fuels. A reporter asked if the sudden introduction of his principle wouldn't upset the present economic system. Tesla replied, it is badly upset already. Now that is abstract thinking. There is no telling where we would be today, had Tesla been funded fully during his heyday. I also believe that some of his discoveries may be useful in paranormal research.